So that's the first rule. Always bring all your friends to your conferences. <laughs> and your students, before grading them, OK? <laughs> Most seriously. I will speak to you about entrepreneurship, which is one of my passions. And actually, we started a company uh, almost two years ago, OK? So I want to speak about entrepreneurship, but especially about entrepreneurship during crisis times and disruptive times, OK? No need to tell you that the COVID-19 was a crisis. I guess every, everyone experienced it. Sadly, we are getting over, so that's a good, the good news. We learned a lot of things during this pandemic with our company. I want to give you the example of Tonic Teaching, which is my company. And Tonic Teaching is about teaching, OK, basically. So we do teach and we give conferences, OK? I want to share with you strategies, approaches, and tools to be an entrepreneur and to manage companies during crisis times. Not only pandemics, let's hope it's the only one we will have to live during our lifetime, probably yes, but financial crisis, political crisis, and any type of crisis, okay? Tonic teaching is a combination actually of two passions, traveling, probably all have here, and another one which is teaching. And we try to combine this by traveling a lot. I want you to show a bit of empathy my colleagues spoke about that. And to imagine how we started. Imagine that you're in February 2020. You all remember this, not that far ago. And you start a company. OK? Any company. Or well, let's say, could be tonic, but think about any company. You get a first, a first client, a first customer that is giving you a lot of work. So you start working. You quit your job. OK? One month later, what happened? Lockdown. Traveling, not an option anymore. You can still teach online, right? And then your client filled up for bankruptcy. OK? So the picture is this. This is the second rule. Always start a, a pitch or a speech positively. OK? So you have no job, no client anymore, no activity, and you worked 1,000 hours for nothing. OK? That's the beginning. Positive, no? OK? Oh, another thing. You are in Belgium. Who visited Belgium here? Raise your hands, please. OK? For those who didn't, it rains all the time. OK? So no job, no money, no client, no activity, it rains. <laughs> I told you that you can use this for all the types of crises. What do crises have in common? OK, I have very fancy pictures. You can have the presentation at the end. A lot of changes, OK? And fast changes, faster than when it's not a crisis. Scary times, this is the image in the middle, OK? So people are scared to hire new services, and you are a new company, so it's difficult to get hired. And the third one, which is actually two things, more risks or riskier times, okay, and more uncertainty, okay? Do an effort of memory here. We had no idea what was going on with the COVID, okay? We thought that uh, paracetamol was killing you if you were taking it at the beginning. You remember those times? So we were getting information along the way, and we had to adapt and to change a lot. This is the romantic part of the talk, OK? I will speak about one of the basics or the very important key success factors, which is your founding team, OK? The founding team, and the guy is here today if you want to say hi to him. The idea is that you need to be with people that support you no matter what, OK? So imagine, raining, no money, no job anymore, and alone. So that would be too much, OK? So you need to be with someone that supports you and also someone that adds value to what you are doing, OK? For instance, I'm a shy business person, as you can all see, OK? And my business partner is an IT engineer, OK? I know nothing about technology, OK? They had to explain me how to use this, OK? That's the idea. So you need to have people who have complementary skills to yours and create more value, OK? And the idea is that one plus one should make more than two, meaning that if one plus one makes two, just work alone, and you don't need to spend time talking to other people, OK? I came here with my business partner, and I asked him, dude, how many messages did we exchange in the last one year? And we had a look at WhatsApp, more than one million messages, OK? I don't exchange that many messages with my girlfriend. <laughs> OK, don't, don't, don't tell her. I hope this is not recorded, OK? <laughs> but that's the idea. So this is the, the starting point, the founding team, people who will help you, who will support you and someone who has the same objectives than you. Okay? You can be different, complementary, but you need to have some common ground. Let me ask you a question here. 
And no, don't worry, you don't need to speak. Just raise your hands. Who had a Nokia in the early 2000s? Raise your hands. OK. You remember the 3310? <laughs> this was amazing. One of my friends forgot the phone outside. It was, Belgium, it was raining, OK? It was raining. The phone's still working. It was amazing. Do that today with your phones, OK? Adaptability is key, OK? When I teach entrepreneurship, they always ask me, OK, what, how can we fight against big companies? They have money, they have people, et cetera. Adaptability is the answer, OK? Who has a Nokia today? You can raise your hands. <laughs> no one. OK, maybe some shy people who don't want to say. But no one has a Nokia today. What happened? World leaders, no need to change anything. Let's not adapt anything. If world leaders had to adapt, imagine small companies. And this is where small companies can actually compete with larger companies. Okay? by being more adaptable. I have to admit one thing. I wasn't too positive today when I started this. Okay? I have a good news. Adaptability is the best ground for creativity. Uh, crisis time, sorry, is the best uh, ground for creativity. Okay? More constraints lead to more creativity, actually, which is kind of counterintuitive, but it's how it is based on research. Why? Two main reasons. You will ask yourself questions that you never asked yourself before. For instance, I have a restaurant. How can I keep working with my restaurants if customers cannot come to my place? Okay? How can I put my PIN code without touching the device when I'm paying? Okay? How can I teach online to people who have no internet? Okay? Those questions that we never ask ourselves before. Okay? The other one is the need to update. The need to adapt yourself, not only your strategy, but also to say, OK, we adopt this directly. Two years ago, who was spending more than two days per week on Zoom? You can raise your hands. It's the last time, please. Zoom, two, days, two years ago, OK? Zoom in the last year, who used it like every day? Almost everyone, OK? The sentence that I used the most in the last two years is, oh, sorry, I was on mute, OK? <laughs> Sounds familiar? That's the idea. So creativity, amazing during crisis times. The other point is remember that customers are afraid to spend more money. Uncertainty, changes, risky times, OK? Feedback is key here. You need to do value co-creation with your customers, meaning creating products together. Less risks for them and for you, OK? And here the big change is feedback. I will not ask you to raise your hands, but did, did that happen to you? You go to a restaurant. Just, we can go to the restaurants uh, again, so it's good. So you go to a restaurant, the food was very bad, the service was awful, and then you have to pay. The waiter or the waitress arrive, and they ask you, how was it? Mm, it was OK. It was terrible. OK? This is what you need to avoid. So you need to find solutions to avoid this, to have proper feedback that will help you to actually improve your products, your services, or all the activities that you do into the company. The second approach that we used is something that we call, and I guess we are not the only ones, selling before building. Okay? Selling before building is that you will expose or show the product or the service to your customers before you're actually building it or performing it. Let me give you a quick example. We do tonic teaching, teaching. Okay? So we do teach before starting building the content of the courses. We validate them with the customers. Okay? Once they say yes, we just build them. If we do it firsthand, most probably we will have to change and to adapt things. We lose time, and time is money. Okay? And remember, crisis, uncertainty, scarcity of resources. Okay? All this, in the last two hours, mindset, one is continuous improvement. Keizen. I always try to put one word in Japanese in my conferences. Okay? So the idea is this, continuous improvement. And when we show this, we always think about the product or the service. Actually, continuous improvement should be a mindset that you apply to everything, OK? All the activities that you perform, you should think about this case in a continuous improvement approach. How do you do it? By asking yourself questions, OK? I have this belief, and this is completely personal, but I guess some of you will share it, that doing business is about asking questions to yourself and to other people, OK? If you ask the correct questions, you will be able to adapt and to create new things as well, OK? And the last one, we had to select some of them. We could, we could speak about this for, for, for hours, but we don't have four hours. Okay? It's continuous learning, which is also a mindset. 
Okay? You should keep learning all the time. And this could be traditional learning like getting a degree, getting a PhD, but also learning from experience. Okay, it's the best, it's the best way, I guess. So you try to you test new things with your customers. Okay? Could be a new taste for a yogurt, or could be a new approach when you teach, or a new approach when you give a TEDx. Okay? And you test it. And based on the feedback and on the comments, again, no, oh, it was good. No, you need to have proper feedback. You will improve. Okay? So the learning can come from any place, okay? And any action that you are, you are doing. Let me show you and share with you two uh, key tools that we are using, okay? We are using more than two tools, okay? We're not that basic. But I can only share two with you today, which for me, I'm maybe the most important ones during the crisis. This is a risk matrix, which is very simple, okay? You have the impact and you have the probability of happening. You remember my customer who filled up for bankruptcy after a few months of activity and we worked for nothing, okay? If we, we started using this after that, sadly not before, after. The idea is that we need to understand what would be the impact on us and what is the probability of happening. You can measure the probability of a client going for bankruptcy if he's late more than 100, year, one, 100 years for sure, but 100 days, okay? The more days of delaying the payments, the most probability to be in bankruptcy. So once they are here, you should tackle this issue directly. And the objective of this matrix is that you need to solve risks, but you cannot solve them, all of them at once, and you don't have the resources to do it. So you need to prioritize it, okay? That's the first one. The second one is this one that you probably all know, which is a business model canvas, okay? You probably used it. And people, and when I say people, I include myself at some point of the time, normally use it for business plans, okay? I need to ask a loan or I need to show what my business is about, I will use this. Actually, we use it for creativity, okay? When we think about creativity, innovation, people think about new technology and new products or services. What if innovation could be any of those nine categories here? And I will give you two examples that we applied. Basically, you got this, okay? We do teach and we do give conferences, okay, in different languages. We try, English is not the best one, okay? And then we have some competencies and some areas of expertise. The channels on campus and online, as you probably all experienced recently. What if people don't have access to the internet? They don't have the infrastructure. They live in a remote area somewhere, for instance, in South America, we experienced this recently, okay? How can we bring this education to them? And by answering this question and thinking about innovating on this category, we can find a solution for them, which is inclusive, which is fair, and also a business opportunity, okay? So what we found, and we can brainstorm on this at one point of the time, but what we found so far is to upload the content on the devices and we send them to them. And so they can just have the content, okay? The other idea, or one that I want to share with you is on the customer segments, okay? Remember Nokia, we have a business, it works well, we have customers, why should we change anything? You should. Just asking the question could be interesting. If you do it, and we did it here, you can have a complete new business model, you can launch new products, you can also have new customers, and even launch a complete new business if it's innovative enough. What we did with the customer segment is like, I see a lot of my students here, um, they are obliged to be here, but we said, <laughs> we said our, our customer segment are our students, okay? Undergraduate, masters, and MBA students. What if we start targeting unprivileged people? Okay, people who cannot afford education. And we thought about refugees at refugee camps. How can we bring higher education, university level education to refugees at refugee camps? It's so different of what we are doing and we need to adapt so many things that it's a complete new activity, okay? This, those are the kind of tools that we use for innovation. I want to summarize a little bit the takeaways, okay? You have seven points here, the six key tools that I, or, or key success factors that I share with you, and the use of strategic tools, okay? Too often we use strategic tools only for once and then we forget about it. During crisis time, you should use them every day, okay? The other ones, the founding team, find your beloved business partner, okay? Adaptability, creativity, co-creation through feedback, okay? Continuous improvement and continuous learning. 
Let's try to answer the question. Can we learn from our mistakes? I do believe yes, under certain conditions. The first one is the willingness to learn, okay? If you go on campus, you attend classes, but you want to learn, you, don't, you will not learn anything. It's the same when you're doing business. The other one is being constant and being committed, okay? Remember, 1,000 hours, we don't get paid, we could have stopped there. We decided to continue. This is where we started learning things, okay? It has to have consequences. You drive a car at 100 kilometers per hour, you don't get a fine next time you do it again. You get a fine, maybe probably next time you will not do it. Same happened here. If you don't lose money with your mistakes or there is no impact, why should you change anything? No consequences, okay? And the last one is the passion. Okay, my colleagues said it as well. I think this is the motto of everything. When you're passionate by something, you do it even without getting paid. Maybe I shouldn't say it here. But the idea is that passion leads everything, okay? Without passion, we would have stopped after three months or four months of activity, okay? How can you say, okay, or how can you understand if you are passionate about something? This is the only job I would do for free, teaching. Okay, sharing knowledge and, and, and learning at the end of the day. Okay, just want to, to, to make you go home after my, my two colleagues a little bit at ease and telling you that things are getting better. Okay, so today where we are, completely different from what we imagined at the beginning and maybe completely different from what would have happened without the COVID-19, the crisis and the bad experience with our first customer. Okay, our next big project will be in social entrepreneurship, okay? There is a seven factor here that I didn't mention, which is being lucky, okay? Being an entrepreneur is being with the correct idea, at the correct place, with the correct people, okay? So we were lucky enough, our way to give back is to give this higher education at the refugee camps, but I guess this will be for another talk. Thank you.